So while you're setting my slides up, uh, the IMF and the World Bank were created in the United States back at the end of World War II. And their main function at the time was to rebuild the political power of the capitalist classes in Europe. Because the capitalist classes in Western Europe had either sided with the Nazis, fled with their capital, or had their economies destroyed. Uh, so the, the effects of the transnational corporations, which are the main force behind the World Bank and the IMF, is to create more inequality and environmental destruction. Those are the two big impacts of the transnational corporations. They're creating more inequality in the world and greater environmental destruction. Good. So the inequality is both international and domestic within countries. And wealth is shifting away from production to finance, insurance, and real estate, what we call the fire sector finance, insurance, and real estate. They do not create new wealth, they just move around existing wealth. So in Wall Street, the finance sector is having more power in the United States than Main Street, where most of us live, the productive economy. The transnational corporations have three major flaws. They are not rooted in a local community. They have no allegiance to any place. They are not green. They destroy the environment. And they are not democratic. They are hierarchies. They are dictatorships driven just by profitability. So the solution, the answer, the antithesis is the locally controlled economy, a locally controlled economy that is aiming to restore nature rather than destroy it. There is a new economy developing called the triple bottom line. And the triple bottom line is social justice, environmental restoration, and financial sustainability together, strengthening each other. Corporations in the United States have taken over every sector. Food and farming. 40% of the food in the United States is wasted. 40% from the farm to the home to the garbage can. Somewhere along the way, 40% of the food that is produced is wasted. The healthcare sector. The corporations have taken over. When the World Health Organization ranks countries, the United States ranks 37th in the world for its healthcare system. It's the most expensive healthcare system, and it only ranks 37th with countries like Costa Rica, small countries, way ahead of it. The energy sector, our, our oil corporations are well known for their plundering of the planet. The public airwaves, the media, the television, the radio, the magazines, the newspapers, the so-called public airwaves have been taken over by the corporations. They sell us, the people, our brains to the corporate advertisers. Corporate advertisers pay to get into our heads. And they have taken over our government. And know that our politicians are rented by our corporations. They're not under the control of the people, they're under the control of the corporate donors. There's a fiscal crisis of government in almost every country. The fiscal crisis in the United States is because the big corporations are paying less taxes, even though their share of the economy is growing. So they are getting bigger and stronger. They are able to pay less taxes but they are able to demand more services from the government and is creating a bankrupting of the government. If the U.S. government was a company, it would be bankrupt. It would be shut down. 
So these are the biological systems on the planet that are collapsing. Species destruction, thousands of plants and animals being destroyed. The topsoil that we grow our food in. In the United States, we lose 3 billion tons of topsoil every year. It's lost forever. Deforestation, cutting down the forests of the world, the lungs of the planet. Greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, and they are going up, causing global warming. The glaciers and the polar ice caps are melting, and the ocean levels are rising. So all cities that are on the ocean are in danger by these rising ocean levels. Cities like Miami and Houston, Texas are going to go underwater. I live in San Francisco. And we're very worried about rising ocean levels. The question is, will economic growth save us? This is GDP, gross domestic product. There's a group that has developed a thing called the Genuine Progress Indicator. And what they do is they subtract the destructive negative things from the overall production of the economy. And it shows that the U.S. economy has been declining since the 1970s. Because you have to subtract the cost of lung cancer from smoking cigarettes, from the sale, the revenue from selling cigarettes. And what you find out is that the U.S. economy is not growing. The reason why China shows a high rate of growth each year is because they are destroying their environment and exploiting their workers. In the United States, green jobs, that is solar energy, wind energy, biofuels, conservation, recycling, composting, those jobs are growing twice as fast as non-green jobs. There's a shift to a regenerative economy, an economy based on saving nature instead of destroying nature. These are the top job creating sectors in the U.S. economy, conservation and efficiency, the smart grid, that is the electric system, using computer technology to link the system. We don't have an integrated electrical system in the United States. It's all broken up, but now it's being integrated. Wind power, wind power is the fastest growing energy sector in the United States. Solar electric and solar thermal photoelectric is growing rapidly. Biofuels, the US military is doing lots of research on biofuels. And water, water conservation. Water is going to be the key issue. And we'll talk about peak oil. Peak water is going to make peak oil look like nothing. You can live without oil. You can't live without water. So these are programs that we're doing in San Francisco that I'm involved in to try and counteract the power of the corporations. We take students out into the environment and have them do work to make the city a better place to live and teach them how to grow crops, how to plant trees, how to remove sidewalks, how to increase the quality of life in the cities. Because this younger generation will be running the world when the environmental crisis gets much, much worse. This is a project at a high school I'm working at. This is the school back over here. We've taken out the cement, we're putting in soil, and we're breaking up the sidewalk, and we will plant food and medicine crops in the sidewalk. The city government has money for planting trees to sequester carbon and to get rid of the cement so the rain will go into the soil. This is a book that uh, myself and a few uh, colleagues of mine did a few years ago called Building the Green Economy. The key thing is to build teams across institutional borders and I would say across national borders as well. The grassroots globalization that's going on around the world, and we're all part of it. So what we did was we looked at success stories, 
places where people got organized, took control of their local economy, and made changes in a progressive direction. So here are the different movements around the world that we need to unify. We call it a solutionary movement. It's beyond revolutionary, it's solutionary to find solutions to these problems. The fair trade movement, the fair trade movement is linking consumers in the north with producers in the south. Local control movement, local city governments like in San Francisco trying to keep wealth within the city. Corporations don't take the wealth out. The green movement, which is pushing to have solar energy and wind energy and conservation, water purification to treat the environment right. The permaculture movement, permaculture can create more food in any given hectare than the conventional food system can do. About four times as much food can be produced with permaculture techniques. It's like the eco-village movement in, in Russia. Get the productivity out of the soil. The peace movement fighting against the military, against military intervention in Syria, and the women's movement, the majority of the world's people, and most of the work is done by women and there's a movement to empower them. We need to link all of these different movements together. The parts of the next system already exist. The challenge is to unite them into a different system. We intellectuals, we criticize capitalism, but that's not enough. We have to create an alternative system to replace capitalism. So, we need to create places like this meeting where people come together and strategize platforms for unifying the movement. So the Green Festival, this is a, a, an event that I started with some friends 12 years ago. We operate in major cities around the United States, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, San Francisco, Washington. We only bring in the best companies, the cleanest companies. And there'll be about 300 companies in a big hall. We get about 30 or 40,000 people come in in the weekend. We have about 150 speakers talking about climate change, how to build a new economy, fair trade movement, all of these different 